Hey, PLO Professor here. Thank you for tuning in with us. Uh, this is episode 20, part two, calculating pot equity, particularly in high-low situations, both in limit as well as in pot limit. A couple of quick housekeeping issues. As you guys can see, I do have a PLO Professor hoodie on. Please go ahead and visit the website. It does help out the channel. We have hoodies, we have hats, we have card protectors. Also, I'm curious if you guys want me to have like some t-shirts or something like that. Uh, t-shirts I found aren't very popular with uh, poker players. But there are some things that I've been working on, like a, a quote that says, find your flip, which I think is a really good quote, uh, you know, in order to like find your flip of the day that uh, helps you end up being a profitable player. And hopefully when you guys are getting it all in, you're getting it more than 50% uh, equity. And hopefully you're getting it in with like 60 or 65% equity, which would be a favorable flip, obviously. Uh, but a couple other things that I'm going to cover real quick. I had a viewer ask, how do you calculate pot? Uh, what will you do in order to calculate pot? And keep in mind, the dealer can do this for you, but if somebody bets $20 into you and there's $100 in the pot and you're thinking, what can I make it? What you can do is you can take the original bet, you multiply it by three, and then you add what we call the trail or what's behind. So for example, if there's $100 in the pot and your opponent decides to bet $20, what you do is you take that 20, if you want to know how much you can make it, you multiply that by three, which would be 60, and then you add any of the previous bets in front of it, including the pot, which would be 160. So if somebody bets 20 and there's $100 in the pot and you'd like to raise it max, you can make it a total of $160. I hope that helps. And that applies in all situations. Even if somebody bets 20 and there's five callers, you take the last bet, which would be 20, multiply it by three, add the trail plus what's in the pot and that's how you calculate pot. If you need more help uh, calculating that, please let me know and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll message you uh, personally to go over some, some more examples on that. Uh, so enough about the housekeeping. So here we're talking about equity in specifically high-low situations. Now this happens to be a game that I think once you understand the equity, you will have a significant edge over your opponents. High-low happens to be my strongest game. Uh, it's a game that I understand because I understand the equity a lot more than I think what most people understand. And uh, it's, a, it's a game that I don't mind playing anybody on for just about any amount of stakes. I had a, a, a viewer ask me, uh, what's the highest that you'll play heads up? I said, right now with my bankroll, I feel comfortable playing as high as 1025, PLO4 or PLO5, also known as Big O. Um, but in a full ring game, something like 510 or even 125 is a little bit more appropriate. Now, one thing that you will find out as you play Big O or as you play PLO 8 or even Limit is sometimes the lower limits have much worse players. So what I found in, in PLO, just high, sometimes medium stakes has really bad players. Uh, high stakes has good players and low stakes has good players, but medium stakes is kind of the sweet spot for PLO. And then when it comes to high-low situations, usually lower stakes, uh, you, you can end up uh, maximizing your profits a lot more because either people don't understand uh, the equity or they're not aggressive enough. And one of the ways that I play PLO8 as well as Big O is I play with what we call an ultra-aggression uh, uh, way of playing. So. Uh, if I raise, there's probably like a, if I raise pre-flop, there's probably like a 60 to 80% chance that I'm going to be continue betting and betting on the flop no matter what the board comes. Because if I find a table where everybody's just sitting there holding back, waiting for the nuts, uh, I'm going to win a lot of hands just by betting because you're going to, I'll bet with second nuts, third nuts, I'll bet with stone, with, with just pure air. And people tend to play PLO 8 and Big O way too tight. Usually if you get two people on a Big O table uh, that are that play very similar to me, uh, if you get myself and one other person that plays ultra aggressive, you will end up seeing a lot more all-ins pre-flop because uh, people like myself where we apply the appropriate rule understand that our equity is going to have a huge advantage over random hands and it's even going to have a good advantage over some other hands as well. So when you're playing four card high low, we like to apply the three two rule. Now, if you remember going back, the three two rule is three to Broadway and two to a wheel or three to a wheel and two to Broadway. What that means is you have to have an ace in your hand. So for example, when you're playing four card, if you have a hand like, oh, let's just say ace, jack, deuce, four, 
Again, we have three to a wheel, two to Broadway. If you're playing five card high-low, and you will play what we call the three-three rule, uh, which is, you guessed it, three to Broadway and three to a wheel, those hands are gonna have the most amount of equity. Now, Professor, Professor, I saw you once call with like three, five, six, nine, king and big O. No, I didn't call. I think I actually raised pre-flop, and, uh, and there's reasons behind that. If you're playing on a passive table, again, I'm going to be the super aggressive maniac because when I have a super nutted hand, you're not gonna know what I have. And that exact same uh, 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 session that I had where I had three, five, six, nine king, which is not a great hand in big O, obviously you're like, professor, that doesn't apply to the three, three rule. Uh, that was the same session where I had nut nut on the flop and we got it all in and it was almost a $4,000 pot in one, two, five. Because when I raised it on the flop, uh, the person was like, well, he raised everything, so I'm just going to kick it back at you. And then we ended up getting it all in three ways, and it was uh, almost a four grand pot. So um, by playing ultra aggressive, people won't ever know where you're at, unless, of course, you fold, and they know your hand's no good. But um, generally speaking, if you do play ultra aggressive, your stack size is going to vary a little bit, but it's going to continue to go up, because if you're playing on a table where other people are passive, they're going to fold a lot. They're going to fold second nut hands, they're gonna fold draws, they're gonna fold things like that. So here I'm gonna talk about how do you calculate the equity when you're dealing with high-low situations, okay? So let's take an example that I had exactly four or five weeks ago. I was playing a limit game. I was playing 10-20 limit, uh, and it had a kill, but in this situation we did not have a kill. But I went ahead and I raised. I had a hand just like this, ace-jack, deuce-four. And uh, on 1020, of course, the most you can make a preflop is $20. We ended up with two callers. So there ends up being $60 in the pot. And uh, the flop ends up coming out nine, queen, three. That is a really bad flop for my hand. Ace, jack, deuce, four. I'm pretty much done with the hand. Uh, if anybody bets, uh, I'm going to fold. But what happened is, is both players checked it to me. So I said, well, if you guys are both gonna check, I did have a backdoor flush draw. I do have backdoor lows. Uh, I can also go runner, runner straight. I can also pair the board. And quite frankly, I can just steal the pot on the flop because two people check. So I go ahead and bet, I bet $10. I get two callers, both the people still continue. So now the pot ends up being $90, okay? And what comes on the turn? Well, the turn comes up a six. And the first player to act decides to bet 20, okay? So here's a, here's a situation where you have to say, professor, professor, are you gonna make the right call? Is it good to call here? Is it good to raise? Is it good to fold? Now, anytime you're playing limit, I apply what I call the Daniel Negreanu principle or the DNEG principle, which means if it's worth one bet, it's worth four. Because if you're getting the right equity with one bet, you're certainly getting the right equity with a bet and a raise, and you're definitely getting the right equity with a bet and a raise and a re-raise. By the way, there should be no three betting in limit Omaha. And you're definitely getting the equity with a four bet or a cap bet. So in this situation, first player decides to bet out $20, second player folds, now it's heads up to me, what do you do? Well, Professor, of course you're gonna call, right? I don't know, let's factor in what the equity is in this exact same scenario. Now when you're factoring this in, you have to assume the only card I can win the whole pot with is a five, right? So, because a five gives me a straight, the person on this board right here on a rainbow board, queen nine, three, six, they've either got queen nine, They've got two pair, they have a set of queens. They could just be betting with a bluff like 10 jack, you know, just on a straight draw. But let's just assume that your opponent does have a hand that's good on the high side unless you hit your five. So what we wanna do is we wanna say, well, there's five, uh, there's four fives left in the deck to scoop the pot. So we take four outs, right? And you multiply that by two. Now, if you want the actual numbers, the actual number on the turn is 1.875. Is no one's gonna remember that. On the flop, the actual numbers to calculate your equity is 3.75. No one's gonna remember that. We go back, we try to keep it simple. Multiply it times four on the flop, multiply it by two on the turn, you're pretty much good, okay? So we're gonna take four outs here, we're gonna multiply that by two, uh, and that ends up 8%. So we have 8% equity to scoop the entire pot. Now let's factor in how many outs we have to get half the pot, okay? So we have three aces, we have three deuces, we have three fours, and 
We have already factored in the fives, right? So we still have four fives to get half, but we've got that applied on the full portion of getting all the pots. So we're not gonna count the fives. Now we count the sevens. We have four sevens and four eights. Well, nine plus eight equals 17, right? Well, professor, professor, don't you take that and you multiply that by two, which is 34, and you add the eight, you have 42% equity? No, because you are only drawing to half of the pot. Now, what you have to figure in, when you're calculating the equity on the low side, if you're on the flop, you take your outs and you multiply it by two. If you're on the turn, you take your outs and you multiply it by one. That is your actual equity because that's what you're playing for is half of the pot. So your equity is cut in half. So 17 equals 17% 17 equity. Now you can go ahead and add them together. So your hand equity in this situation is 25%. Now, does it make sense to call $20 in order to win 110? Because there's $90 in the pot and your opponent bet 20. Now, here's the mistake most people factor in. They go, well, it's 20 to win 110. Wrong. It's actually $20 to win 110 8% of the time. Okay, what that means is you need 12 and a half times that $20 in order to assume the entire equity, which means 12 times, 12, 12 and a half times 20 is, yep, you got it back there, $250. So there needs to be $250 in this pot in order for you to make the call on just the high end. Now, if you factor in the low end and your heads up, keep in mind, this is a heads up situation. This isn't a multi-way situation. If your heads up, you don't factor in their $20 bet because their $20 bet, you're only playing for half the pot. So you have to call the 20 in order to call, uh, in order to match their 20. You're actually calling $20 to win half of 90. So you're calling $20 to win $45. This is the biggest mistake, the biggest leak people have when they play high low. And the biggest thing that they don't understand is when somebody bets $20 into a $90 pot, you're not calling 20 to win 110. You're calling 20 to win 110 if a five comes. That's only gonna happen 8% of the time. We already figured out that's not the right equity. You're calling $20 to win $45. And you're only getting there 17% of the time. Now, what does that mean? If you, if you round this up, say it's 20%, that means you need five times the amount in order for you to make the right call. So in a situation like this, in order to make the right call for $20 on the turn, how much needs to be in the pot? About $340, that's absolutely correct. Uh, and there is not $340 in this pot, is there? Now keep in mind, this is a heads up situation. So $20 to win 45 or 90 is not the right amount. Not, not today, not tomorrow, not ever. Doesn't matter what you do with the math. You can jumble it all around all you want. It's just not the right amount. Now let's take the same scenario and let's assume that it's pot limit Omaha and we're going heads up, okay? So these are the situations because a lot of times when you end up playing pot limit Omaha, whether it's four card or five card, first of all, you love it when there's three, four, five way action. But if you play ultra aggressive, what ends up happening you, you pot it pre-flop, you pot it on the flop, you get to the turn. A lot of times on the turn, you're gonna be down to either heads up or maybe three ways. And a lot of times when you bet, you're either gonna scoop the pot or you're gonna get heads up and going into the river. Uh, and if you get three ways going into the river, you're okay with that. But in a situation where you're dealing with pot limit Omaha, and let's just assume that there's $300 in the pot. And let's say, let's take the exact same hand. Ace, Jack, Deuce, Four. Ace, Jack, Deuce, Four. And we'll just say these are all rainbow flops uh, in this situation. And let's say that the board, let's, let's make the board a little bit different. Let's make it a little bit juicier. Let's say the board is three, five, queen, okay? In this situation, you're drawing really, really strong. This is a situation where I'm not gonna fold. I can already tell you that right now. Uh, but let's go ahead and figure out what your equity is. Your opponent decides to lead out, they bet $300 and they have a set of queens. You just know that this is a guy who's super tight, super nitty, never bets unless he has he or she has the stone cold nuts. So when they do bet, they pretty much can just turn their hand over because you already know they either got a set of queens or they have ace, deuce, four queen, which you'd be in a really bad spot if they have ace, deuce, four queen. 
But in this situation, let's assume that they have a set of queens or a set of fives or something to that effect because they're a very, very tight player. Uh, what kind of equity do you have? Well, you're drawing to the nuts on any ace, deuce, four, right? So that's nine outs. You're drawing to the nuts on any six. So that's another four outs. So for the high, in this situation, you have 13 outs. And in that situation, we know we multiply that by four and you end up with 52% equity. Now this doesn't even factor in the low, okay? Uh, and of course, yes, I know, George in the back, he says, well, you actually multiply by 3.75. Thank you, George, I'm so glad you pointed that out. For all intents and purposes, we're just gonna multiply by four, okay? Uh, so you're gonna have about 52% equity. And for those of you who don't believe me, go ahead and go on some kind of PLO calculator. There's plenty of them online. You'll see uh, that that happened. That's, that's the way you calculate it out. But in any case, so we're 52% we're equity on the high, and then you have to figure there's four sevens and four eights, right? So you have another eight outs to the low. And in this situation, because you're the low, that a seven or an eight is only gonna give you half of the pot, you don't multiply that by four, you actually multiply that by two, you cut it in half. So on the low side, you take your equity, and instead of multiplying it by four, you multiply it by two. On the turn, you multiply it by one. So you just, same scenario, you just cut it in half. So eight outs actually gives you another 16% equity to get half of the pot. So in this situation, you're well over 65% equity. In this situation, you wanna get as many chips as you want in the pot. Flop comes, three, five, queen, you got ace, jack, deuce, four. This is an all-in scenario uh, because even if you do lose, 65% of the time you're going to win money in this scenario. Uh, you're either gonna get your money back 16% uh, of the time or you're gonna get the whole pot 52% of the time. I hope this helps. If we take the exact same hand Ace, Jack, Deuce, Four, and you have a flop of three, five, queen, and say, for example, the turn is a nine, cut all your equity in half. So he bets pot for 300, and he or she, you decide to call 300, the turn comes up a nine, and this is one reason why when people play with me, they'll hear me say, Omaha nine, Omaha nine, anytime I play high, low, because a nine really doesn't change anything. But now we've got $900 in the pot, and again, you've got ace, jack, deuce, four, and you're like, well, what kind of equity do we have? Well, we still have the same amount of outs, right? So we still have 13 outs to scoop the pot, but now, since we're on the turn, we're gonna multiply that by two, which means now we have 26% equity, okay? And to go to the low, a seven or an eight gives us the low, uh, which is another eight outs. Now, because we're on the turn, we just multiply that by one, so now in this situation, we actually have 34% equity. Now this is one of those situations where if somebody bets pot, they bet $900. Again, what did I tell you in the last video? Anytime you're getting 33% equity or more, it's okay to call. It's not the greatest call in the world, but you're gonna be an even player by getting 33%. If you get more than 33%, that's when you start getting uh, higher positive uh, uh, EV. Uh, especially if it goes multi-way, like if somebody bets pot in this situation, somebody else calls, obviously you call. In this situation, $900 bet, and you've got a total of 34% equity, which means one out of three times, you're either gonna scoop or get half the pot. This is okay to call, okay? It's not the greatest call in the world. I know some people are gonna be like, what are you doing, what are you doing? I had somebody say in the last video, anytime you're getting 33% equity, that's not appropriate. Well, it is. Because the most you can bet in Paul and Omaha is the pot. So you factor the pot is 900. <clears throat> the most somebody can bet is 900. So you're getting two to one on your money, which means if you put in 900 and you run it out three times, you're going to get $900 back. That's what 33% equity means, okay? Uh, if you run it out three times, you'll get your money back. So that's why I say it's an okay hand to call in this situation, this becomes a coaching situation. How many chips do they have left? Uh, if an eight comes and all you have is the low, is your opponent tight enough and has enough chips behind that you can push them off of a set of queens? Because if the board is three, five, queen, turns a nine and the river is an eight, now all of a sudden he loses to six, seven, they lose to 10 jack. And if they check to you and you bet 2,700, uh, you're putting them in a pickle. You know, chances are they're gonna call. Uh, but same thing, if a six comes up, they still might call. Uh, and then you're getting what we call implied odds, which I'm not gonna talk about right now. But again, that's a coaching situation. But 
I hope this helps out you guys. Uh, please let me know uh, what comments you guys have, what questions you guys have. The biggest thing when you're dealing with high-low situations is remember, if your head's up and somebody bets on the turn, you're not playing for their bet plus what's in the pot if all you're drawing to is a low. You're playing for half of what's in the pot. So if there's 500 in the pot and the person bets 500 and all you're doing is drawing to the low, you're calling $500 to win 250. And that's what every, not everybody, but that's where a lot of people's leaks are. If you're a player who does that, uh, congratulations, I love playing with you. Um, if you're a player who does not realize that or have questions about that, please leave me a comment. Uh, you know, tell me this doesn't make sense or can you explain it more in detail? I hope this helps you guys out. Uh, please, if you haven't already, hit a like and subscribe button. Uh, and if this is the first video that you've watched of the PLO Professor, go ahead and go all the way back to episode one so that way you can tag along with us through our journey. I'm going to start posting some videos too on Deuce of Seven Triple Draw and Stud and things like that. I had some requests of that. Uh, after I asked if you guys wanted to do that. So I appreciate all you guys. We're at like 3,000 subscribers and really I'm, I'm super excited about this. And uh, hopefully I will uh, see you guys soon uh, playing some live games. And as always, play smart and run like a god.